All right. My name is Danny Ray, if you didn't know. Ha <laughs> ha. Um, thank you. Thank you, guys. Appreciate that. It means a lot. Um, I'm the founder of the LTM Masterclass, okay, where I go ahead and really teach agents to sell at a very high level with a very, very, very simple, simplistic approach. Okay, um, this is stuff that I've been doing for almost three decades. I've sold everything you can imagine. I've always used the same principles. All right, before I get started, um, we're going to focus on uh, you know, mindset, call structure. We're going to focus on uh, what Jeff touched on, the importance of the very first few seconds on a phone call and how the sale is made or lost during that. But before I get started, I want to thank Jeff and Nick for the opportunity to actually come here and speak to you guys and really show you the business through my eyes. And um, they are just, one thing that we have in common is we are obsessed and have a lot of passion in, in helping agents succeed. All right, before I, I get going, I would, let's all stand up and give them an applause because because of them, this would not be possible. All right, come on, let's go louder, come on. All right, really, really. Um, these guys are unbelievable. They've impacted my business, my wife's business, and probably most of the agents here that, that, that work for Digital BGA or don't. They're just, they're just fantastic, fantastic human beings. Um, with that being said, um, before I go into this, I want to really want to talk about a lot of things that maybe us as agents forget about, all right, and, and, and the business that we have right now, okay? We are in an industry that when a transaction is made, it's a win-win for everybody. Okay, you help, you help and I'll, I'll focus on final expense, okay, because most of you guys in here are probably final expense. All right, we, we, we're in an industry that it's a win-win for everybody when we do a transaction, okay? Now, with that said, we're also in an industry that we, we have the capabilities of making an income like a lawyer, a doctor, a brain surgeon in some cases. But we don't have to go to school for 15 years. All we need is a desire to succeed and willing to go ahead and put the time in. That's the most important thing. You don't need to have a, a five-star upbringing to be successful in this business. I grew up with, a, with, a, with a, a single parent. My mom worked four or five jobs. I don't think I see my mom shut her eyes between age five and 15. So I know where I got my work ethic from. All right, also, you don't need a, a master's degree at, a, at, a, at, a, at an Ivy League school. You're looking at a guy that never got past ninth grade, okay? I was always told that you're never gonna amount to anything. You're never gonna succeed. You're a Rocky Point success story. Who's laughing now? Okay, who's laughing now? So, so I say this because maybe some of you in this room think you need to be somewhere in life to be able to succeed in this business. And all it takes is desire and will and, 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 and a work ethic that's second to none, okay? Um, Anthony Martin, I'm gonna use him as an example because he's an absolute rock star <laughs> in everything he does. His work ethic is impeccable. He wins because he works harder than everybody else and he's relentless in that pursuit of success and being the best. That's why he does what he does, okay? Hard work will outperform talent if talent don't work hard. It's all about hard work, commitment, putting things to action to ultimately gain that success. Okay, so it's, it's very, very important that I wanna brief, briefly talk about that for a second because I think a lot of agents, you know, come into this business and they don't know what to expect. Okay, they think that their past and everything else has, is, is direct proportion to what the, what's gonna happen in the future. So I just wanted to address that real fast. All right, um, so let's get into this. I mean, man, mindset, okay, is something, I hope I'm doing this right, I'm technically challenged, so just bear with me. Okay, all right. Um, mindset in telesales is by far, in my opinion, okay, is the foundation of sales when you when you're talking over the phone okay it's the ultimate foundation because you want to build on top of that foundation okay so when you're talking about telesales mindset you really have to embrace the fact that and you really have to do this you have to embrace the fact that mindset is everything 
everything when you want to be successful and sell at a high level on the phone. Okay, there's, there's, it's more important than everything else to get your mind right. Okay, um, I always, I always vision a racehorse, right, a thoroughbred. All right, when that gate opens up and they're running, they get their blinders on. They don't know what's going on left or right of them because they're focused on one task at hand. Okay, that's the kind of mindset you need to have when you're on the phone. All right, mindset will determine your success. Okay, um, above all, direct input determines your direct output. That is so powerful because what you feed your brain is what's gonna happen. Your brain is like a computer. Your brain does not know what's real or what's not. It's what you tell it, repetitiously, okay? That's really important, to, to embrace mindset, all right? And understand that you, what you feed your brain is ultimately what's gonna happen, all right? Really, really important, all right? You gotta feed your subconscious mind positivity, okay? What that means is constantly go ahead and feed yourself positivity via affirmations, reading really, really good books. Okay, not, the, not books with cyclopedias, I'm not talking about, like small books, Think and Grow Rich. Okay, Og Mandino's greatest salesman in the world. Those, in my opinion, are the salesman Bibles, in my opinion. Okay, then, then it goes off from there. But ultimately, those two books changed my life. I remember back in the 90s, okay, when I first started my sales career, okay, at the second firm I worked at, okay, it was mandatory. Okay, they hand you an Og Mandino book and you had to read it, okay? I have, that, I have that same book from 1994. It's in my safe at home. Pages are ripped off, it's yellow, some pages are brown. But I remember taking that book. I wanted success so bad back then. You gotta remember where I came from. Ninth grade education, everybody told me I was never gonna amount to anything. I wanted success so bad and prove these people wrong. So, so I was surrounded by people that were successful. Bird and the feather flock together. That's, I'll get into that in a second. But I was around people that were successful and I just wanted to be like them. So I, wanted to, I did exactly what they did. If they told me to eat sand, I tell them to back up the dump truck and dump it in my mouth, okay? I wanted that success so bad. So feeding your brain positivity will reprogram your subconscious mind and to think in a proper way, okay? And flush out all the negativities in life. You gotta, you gotta really embrace that, okay? Um, let, me, let me grab some water, guys, sorry. But yeah, mindset you really got to embrace, all right, um, because that really sets the tone to build on in, in telesales. Okay, and affirmations is how you do that. All right, now I have affirmations on my desk, and it's in the master class as well, that I've had for 20 years. I have, this, I have the affirmations that I wrote in the 90s on a piece of paper that I still have today. I've made new ones, obviously, because the one back then is ripped and like yellow and stuff like that. But affirmations is so key to reprogram your subconscious mind. Okay, such as, I'm the best in the business. I persist till I succeed. Everybody loves to speak to me. Okay, I speak with, I speak with love in my heart. I mean, there's so many affirmations you can do to go ahead and, and reprogram your subconscious mind where it, when you're on the phone, it's gonna come out in your tonality. See, with telesales, and I'll touch on this more so in, in a couple of minutes, 90% of telesales is tonality and enthusiasm. The other 10% is words. Now, unfortunately, agents have it backwards. They think they have to, they gotta tell the sell which is completely wrong. The less you say on the phone, the more you're gonna sell. Because it gives the opportunity for the client to tell you how to close them by asking good questions. Okay, then follow up with smaller good questions. Gain rapport, natural rapport, not, not to go ahead and manufacture it. Okay, also with mindset and really focusing on affirmations and positive influence in your subconscious mind It'll teach you how to avoid negativity without even thinking about it. I tell this to, to my wife all the time. Um, we'll walk in Walmart or a store or something like that, and I'll hear something like four rows over, something negative, and I feel like somebody's stabbing in the side of my ear. That's where you have to program your mind to go ahead and 
when you, when you do an affirmation, the best analogy I could use is when you do affirmations, you're building a barrier, a force field around your brain that does not you get the mental stiff arm whenever negativity comes your way. Okay, your, your, your skin gets thick. Things bounce off to you like rubber bullets, okay? So that's the impact of mindset you guys really have to embrace, okay? How imp the importance of mindset, okay? As a foundation in your tell cells. Before you even get on the phone, your mindset's gotta be right in the morning, okay? You gotta be foaming at the mouth to succeed that day, and I'll get more into that. Um, most important thing I'm a big believer in is visualizing your outcome, knowing that you're gonna write business. You know it with every fiber of your being that you're gonna write business. Visualize the outcome. I remember when I used to drive to work in the morning, okay, uh, when I worked at a, uh, a very large agency, I'm not gonna give them the satisfaction to mention their name, um, but I worked there and I remember driving in the morning traffic, and I would visualize what six o'clock would be like that day, okay? How many, how, how bad I would just kick everybody's ass that day. On the way to work, this is my mindset, visualizing that at the end of the day, I'm just gonna blow past people. People can't even hold a candle to what I'm gonna do today. And I believe that in my heart, in every fiber of my body, okay? Like, I was in the moment. I'm driving in my car, but I was, I was at 6 o'clock that day looking at the board and people with their jaws dropping, like, how do we even catch up? Because what I did is I outworked them. I'm talented. So if you have work ethic and you have talent, talent's tone, you know, it's fine-tuned. You tweak it, okay? Make one less mistake a day, and I'll get into that in a second. <laughs> but if you go ahead and you visualize your outcome, law of attraction, if you guys don't know what it is, I'm sure you guys do. And you visualize your outcome and you're in that moment, okay? It's just your brain just takes up. It's amazing your brain and your subconscious mind is, is so, so powerful that when you do this and you do this consistently and you perform a habit and it becomes distilled in your, in, in your everyday life, things, you become a magnet to success. Okay, remember, stiff arm negativity, affirmations puts that, that helmet on you, okay, to avoid negativity. And when you do that, you become a magnet. Deals that used to don't go, go down. Clients love to speak to you because of the affirmation you say. People love to speak to me. I believe that. When I get on the phone with somebody, I know they love to speak to me because I'm speaking to them with love in my heart. I want to help these people, okay? I want to be the best. I don't think about the sale ever. I focus strong-heartedly on doing what's best for the client, period. Okay, and they know that because it comes over my tone. It like, when I talk to a client, the emotions blast through the phone and hit them in the chest. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, they feel me. Okay, they feel me. All right, so that's really important with mindset, okay? Also, really, really important. You gotta visualize yourself as a multi-million dollar producer, okay? You can't become something if you can't believe that you're not, or you can't become that. So you gotta visualize being a multi-million dollar producer. I would have never wrote millions of dollars in premium, okay, records that still stand today in certain agencies, okay, if, if, if I didn't portray myself before I actually be, be, was that person. All right, when I started, in my sales career, I wanted to be the best, okay? I, wanted, I always wanted to be the best. I always wanted to prove people wrong. People always told me I couldn't do something, watch. Okay, you see the thing on the screen in the beginning, make goals so big, they laugh, then crush them as they sit there in awe or watch. I've been doing that my whole life, okay? So again, you gotta portray yourself and act as if you're a million dollar producer. Visualize that, guys. What would you be? Anthony, what would you be if you're a multi-million dollar producer? right? Visualize that. Close your eyes. Be in the moment. Your brain will figure it out if you believe it. Okay, so it's so, so important to go ahead and visualize and be in that moment to the point where you shut your eyes. You shut your eyes and you're in that moment. You're there. It's, it's down the road. It's a couple of years away. You, you did your goals. You worked your ass off. 
blood, sweat, and tears, got home at night, fell asleep in the clothes that you wore during the day in your office, woke up the same way. You, get in that, you do that over and over again, and you get in the zone. Any of you guys know what the zone is? Randy does. I know that. Bearcat probably does. Bennett definitely does. Look what he did yesterday. Anthony Martin, of course he does. But you got to go ahead and, and be in that moment, okay? Visualize that moment, all right, and be in that moment. And when you do that and you embrace this, you embrace how important mindset is, your success is guaranteed. It is. But you gotta, you got to visualize that and embrace it with every fiber of your being, okay? Um, so, yeah, so the, 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 that's so, so important guys, when it comes to mindset, okay? Now I wanna touch a little bit on fixed mindset, growth mindset. Fixed mindset, I call them naysayers. I don't wanna be around people with a fixed mindset. I think they're cancer, okay, and it spreads. People with fixed mindset, I don't get along with them. They're good people, they're just limited. They have a limited thought process. I'm a growth mindset person. All right, I constantly want to outgrow my comfortability zone because that's the only way you truly succeed is if you, you got to grow. You can't put yourself in a box, okay? Fixed mindset, they're set in their ways. They have limitations on what they can do because that's what they tell themselves, okay? Limited thinking, they, again, they're in a box. Limited thinking, and again, Hey, some people are fixed mindset and they break out of that and becomes a growth mindset, okay? But a fixed mindset, okay, is people that are negative, you can't do that. Those are the people that, unfortunately, it's usually your family members, maybe your friends, your closest friends, maybe people you went to high school with. But your emotion is, well, they're my boys, they're my girls, they're my, you know, I need to hang out with them. When you, sometimes you just gotta take a break, you know, from people like that, to focus on what you, what you need to accomplish. Because those people is like a 50 pound weight that you're just dragging around all the time, all right? And what I've always learned over my years of experience in life is it's so, so much harder to pick people up than it is to them to drag you down. So those fixed mindset people, although again, usually they are family members and friends, are people that you just have to mental stiff arm. You know, that's just my opinion. Okay, growth mindset is somebody that works hard, makes one less mistake a day. They wanna be the best version of themselves tomorrow than they are today. Work ethic always prevails. I remember when I used to work, I used to go ahead and I would be in, in, in such a zone that I would go ahead, I remember this, I'd be the first one in, last one to leave, dirtiest key in the office, okay? Dirtiest key in the office. Chris knows what that means. Um, <laughs> that means I was the first one in, the last one to lock up. <clears throat> All right, so work ethic always prevails. I remember being in, I would sit up and look around, and if I was the last one to leave, that's when I could leave. The punch clock didn't apply to me. Success, in my opinion, you cannot achieve success unless you work more than a 12-hour day. All right, um, embrace failure. Don't be afraid to fail. Failure is the best teacher. <laughs> Some of the most successful people fail, and fail often. All right, fail often. If I'm going to fail 10,000 times to gain that one success, it's worth it, because you did it. You did it. So embrace failure, okay? Try. I always like to use this analogy. A 300 hitter in baseball fails 70% of the time, but he's making millions of dollars and gets all the endorsements. Then you got the 200 hitter who fails 80% of the time. He's driving on a bus from town to town to play baseball. Who do you think's in the batting cage more? The 300 hitter or the 200 hitter? It's one hit every 10 at bats. That's, in, that's this the business right here, okay? Your conversion ratio is 15 or 20%. All you gotta do is this much more to get it to 25 or 30. That's it. It's that much more. The difference is six figures more in your pocket. 50, 100 grand, a couple hundred grand, sky's the limit, you know? 
A setback to setups. In this business, setbacks to setups. Always. Don't ever think of it, oh my God, I got, I'm on a goose egg today. I love goose eggs. It happens. Some of the best people. Michael Jordan missed 9,000 shots in his career. <laughs> okay? He's the best basketball player that ever lived. All right, don't be afraid to be on a goose. Don't be discouraged. That means the next day, you're going to come out. And you're going to have a record day. That's what I visualize. Goose eggs happen. So setbacks are setups. Also take challenges head on relentlessly. Okay? Uh, embrace criticism. It teaches you. I love to be criticized because it's telling me what my imperfections are and what I need to tweak. I welcome it. I'm not perfect. I'm a human being. Very flawed human being. I have a lot of character defects. All right? Um, <clears throat> Success of others proves it can be done. There's a lot of examples in your, this room that tells you guys that this can be done. You got Anthony's, you got the Randy's, you got the Bennett's, you got the Bearcats. There's a lot of people in this room that can prove to you that it can be done, okay? We all put our pants leg on one leg at a time. We all do a lot of things. We eat the same food, perhaps. We all drink the same way. All right, so there's no difference between the people I just mentioned and you. It's just a matter of will and what you want to accomplish. And what, what is the price you're willing to take? Okay, there's always a price you've got to pay. All right, so um, success of others proves it can be done. Okay, years ago, nobody could run a four-minute mile if it was impossible. But once one, one person did it, how many people did do it all the time now? All right, so... Um, with that said, I want to go into a little bit of call structure. I hope you enjoyed that a little bit of a mindset. That's how I look at it um, and how you know, it, it, tr it, tr it trickles down to what I do for a living. Okay. Uh, call structure, very important. You, know, you guys buy leads. <coughs> you know, lead is the bloodline of the business. That's why I taught myself how to self-generate because I don't ever want to rely on anybody because some things happen. But... Um, Call structure is very, very important to know and understand what the life expectancy of a lead. Now, unfortunately, some agents, they get leads, they, they sit in the dial, I'll touch on what Jeff said earlier. They get leads and they just get, they get in this, they don't pick up the phone. <laughs> that lead that you paid for has a life expectancy, okay? People in this day and age with all this technology, I mean, they, they have ADHD, you know, they just, uh, uh, you know, deficit, mental deficits, right? What you make a choice for today, two or three days from now, you're going to forget about it because that was a million thoughts ago. So when you buy a lead and somebody's intent, whatever it is, it's, it's telemarketing callbacks, whether it's an SEO lead, whatever the case may be, they're looking. They're, they have an intent. That intent has a life expectancy, okay? So call structure is very, very important because... You need to maximize a lead without exhausting. What I mean by that is, and a lot of people might disagree with me, that's okay, is um, when you call a lead, you don't want to go ahead and exhaust it, meaning you don't want to pound the, I mean, let me ask you guys, if you guys get a phone call from a telemarketer, I mean, you see the same number popping up three, four times in a row, are you going to answer it? And when you, if you do answer it, you're going to be pissed off? That, I would, you know? And, but that's it. It's, some people like to triple tap, double tap, that's, 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 that's you know, some people's prerogative. But you got to maximize a lead without exhausting it. Which call will have the highest contact ratio? Okay, now I'm going to take these metrics from an agency that used to spend 60, 60 to $75 million a year in marketing. So they probably know these metrics pretty well, okay? There's a reason why when they used to go ahead and put leads in our, our dialers back in the day that they would, they would take them out on, automatically in the sixth call. But again, some people might disagree with me. Um, how many times should you efficiently call a lead, and when should you not call a lead? All right, now some of these numbers are messed up because, again, I'm technically challenged, okay, uh, so I'm just going <laughs> to translate it for you. So the way we do it and the way I teach my agents to do it is we only call people five times. There will not be a sixth, okay, because energy in, energy out, all right? When it comes to calling people, and again, this is, this is people that have an influx of leads, consistent leads. All right, you're at 10% in that first contact. So if you get leads, there's a 10% shot that that person's gonna answer the phone the first call. But that metrics goes up to about 35% in call two, 30% in call three, 
Then it drifts down, okay, to one and a half, you know, any, anywhere from 15% to less than 10% in the fifth call. If you're calling people after six leads, I'm sorry, if, the, if you're calling a lead after six calls, your contact ratio, you might as well just pick up the phone book. I mean, in my opinion. I mean, again, some people might disagree with me, but I'm all about fresh leads and, and getting people in front of me that have a higher intent. And again, a life expectancy, life expectancy to a lead, in my opinion, and somebody that spent $75 million on marketing's opinion, um, is this right here. So that's why it's so important, what Jeff's touched on, is to be constantly invest in yourself, guys. Constantly invest in yourself. Buy more leads. Fear is a liar. It's a liar. It's not even a, it's not even a real motion. It's something that's made up in your head. Fear is a liar. Don't be afraid to invest in yourself. If, you're, if, you're, if you are focused, your, your mindset's right, and you're focusing on being better and making one less mistake a day, not being, not being fearful of failing, then, then just invest in yourself. It's going to work out. There's no way you're going to do something over and over and over again and not become great at it. It's physically impossible. It's impossible. Okay, when have you ever done something that you enjoyed and you loved to do and you didn't become better at it? It doesn't happen. You get better. You just got to stiff arm the fear away, all right, and focus on, you know, the task at hand, all right? So, again, going back to what I just said, understand the life of lead, maximizing your time on the phone, hitting the sweet spot. Sweet spot for me is call two, two and three. Okay, obviously when we make the first call, the client, the new lead comes in, the client gets a lead, uh, an email, a text, they see the number, we call them, they get another text, when we disposition the call two, they recognize the number, by call two, if they're serious, they're gonna pick up the phone. Call three likewise. We're very big in automation, but that's a whole nother uh, <laughs> topic, okay? But again, after call six, what we normally do is we go ahead, after call five, I should say, we put them in a drip, okay? Um, or we have uh, fronters calling back, our 90 days of data calling back, and it's, we've been testing out recently, and wow, just amazing, okay? Um, so if you guys um, have any questions about that, get with me in the next couple of days, all right? All right, so this is the fun. This is what I enjoy doing, and we're doing good. Good, we're doing good, good, really good in time. Beginning the sales process, um, very, very important, okay, to when you are getting on the phone, all right, you have to have your mindset right. You have to have your mindset. You got to be excited. You got to be fired up. Everybody loves to speak to me. I'm the best in the business. I'm a family protector. This is what I do for a living. I help people, okay, this is what I do. All right, and be excited because they need you. You don't, listen, mindset, you don't need clients, they need you. So you have to look at it that way, okay? You're calling all these people, they need you more than they, you need them. Their family needs you. People die every day, 8,000, okay? Somebody's financially having a burden 8,000 times a day, and then multiplied it by family members, 50,000 people a day are having a financial burden because we didn't do our job. That's how personal I take it when I get on the phone. That's how I approach this business, when I'm prospecting, and I'm on the phone, and I'm selling, okay? So you gotta make sure your mind right. When you get on the phone, you gotta be a caged lion, foaming at the mouth. I'm gonna help people today. Get fired up, get excited. This is the business hand. Don't be afraid to pick up the phone, okay? That's your cash register. Cha-ching, <laughs> pick up the phone, right? So. It's, it's, it's just be a cage line. If your mindset's right and you, you, you go, in, go into your day every day with your mindset right, the business is so much fun, okay? This business is very simple if you let it be, all right? Agents, you can give, unfortunately, some agents, complicated. Agents can have a, you can give an agent a paved road, not all of them, but you can get an agent a paved road, nice paved road, smooth. They'll drive down it, they'll stop in the middle of the road, get out of the car, go behind the car, open up their trunk, pull out a chainsaw, and they'll cut a tree right in front of their path because they overthink things. This business is very, very simple if you let it be, okay? This is not a business where you need to know everything before you do anything. It's quite opposite, okay? So again, have your mindset right. Know your outcome. 
When you get on that phone, know the outcome. Assume the sale. Keep it simple on the phone. Ask good questions. Be in, have, be in a, an enthusiastic state of mind. Be excited. Be excited. We're not salespeople. We're family protectors, like Jeff said. We help people. We get paid very handsomely. We don't need to go to college for 15 years and pay back debt for 30. Okay? You could be a high school dropout and be a six-figure producer based off will and passion. Okay? That's what this business is all about to me. All right? Be at a level 10 cert of certainty. Now, when you get on the phone, you have to know your product. Okay? And this comes with failing and failing and often. Don't be afraid to fail. Learn. Okay, fail and fail often. Don't worry, you got somebody else to call, I promise. <laughs> okay, don't worry about it. There's going to be always an influx of leads. Okay, but make one less mistake a day. Okay, make one less mistake a day. Always be at a level 10 certainty. Certainty about yourself, confident, okay, and just knowing what you have. You don't need to know anything. You don't need to know 15 carries and what they do. You need two, three, add on a fourth one. All right, maybe a fifth. You don't need six or seven. Talk about complicating things. <laughs> All right, know your, then when you know your product, don't worry. Some new products will come out, okay? Um, be ready to gain control of the conversation. The very first second. Absolute certainty, okay? Absolute certainty. You've got to be ready to gain control of the conversation. That happens in literally not even 45 seconds. Four or five seconds. You want to make sure that prospect knows that you're somebody they want to do business with. That comes across by certainty, tonality in your voice. Okay? They're like, huh, this, is, this guy's different. I'm going to listen to him. That's how those smoke screens alleviate. Okay? If you handle the first part of the call right, you don't get objections in the end. You don't. Then there's a, what's objection for this, Danny? I don't believe in objections, just smoke screens. They're just, they're just a, a creative way to tell you they don't trust you because you probably messed up in the phone call, okay? <laughs> Somewhere along the line. The visualization they had of you, you said something that now it was getting a little fuzzy, okay? Focus on passionately caring about your client. I cannot stress this enough. When I get on the phone with a client, I'm absolutely certain because I'm the best. There's nobody better than me. I know that, I feel that. But I also, pay, I don't think about the sale. I could care less about the sale. Don't even make, don't even reach my realm. All I have to do is passionately care about the client's needs. And because of my tonality, they're gonna feel that. And that's what separates me from everybody else. But passionately caring about the client Asking good questions, listening to the client. Don't cut the client off. Be a person. All right. When you're talking to seniors, okay, um, you got to talk. You understand something? These are people that have an abundance of wisdom. That's the pleasure of my business that I look at. Is is seniors have an abundance of wisdom? They've been around for so long. They've seen everything. They've experienced heartache, loss. Um, I mean, you name it. They've experienced it. Okay. So. Passionately care, they know. Listen, when you're disingenuous to a senior on the phone, you repulse them. You repulse them. Remember, decades of experience and wisdom. But they'll talk to you for 40 minutes because they're nice. They will never buy from you, though. So once you go ahead and you are disingenuous, okay, and they, and they sniff out the BS that you're talking, <laughs> they'll talk to you forever. Because you know what, it's either you or the dating game, you know, uh, or there's something they're watching on TV. All right, also, again, going back, it's, it's about the relationship you establish with that client, okay? The sale is not important. What's important is giving the proper service that, that client needs, passionately caring. I don't take these people to the mat. Listen, if they want to call me back, that's fine. I, got, I tell clients, listen, I got 37 other people to speak to. What do you want to do? Yeah, here's my number, call back. Sometimes they say, you know, go to Safe Farm, pay 30% more. You know, maybe that's what you need. No, no, don't do that. Give away takeaway clothes. I constantly take away. Lisa, my, my wife, <laughs> rock star. <laughs> All right, she's a, a just a pro at taking it away. 
fine. No, don't do that. Don't close my file. Get him on the phone. She, she rocks. She's a rock star. And she hasn't even hit her potential yet, not even utterly close. So again, it's all about the relationship. The sale is not important. Sales come. If you do the right thing for the client, the sale's going to come. They'll back the truck up and dump sales in your lap if you do it the right way. You know, you'll do it the right way. All right? So again, art of tonality. 90% of the sale is tonality, like I said before. 10% is just words. Unfortunately, a lot of agents have it backwards. They think selling's telling. Sell, if you, the more you talk, the more you're going to lose a sale. Ask good questions, gain natural rapport. The more you try to s talk, 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 you, the client's just getting disengaged. Less is more. Ask good questions. Zip your lip. They will tell you how to close. Just listen. That's one of the most important things, too, is listening to the client. They will tell you the blueprint to close them if you just shut up. Ask good questions and listen. Follow it up with smaller good questions. Okay, I, I have a lot of agents that send me audio and I go over them. Selling's not telling. Okay, you just got to keep it simple for the client. All right, uh, unfortunately, again, many agents think the other way around. All right, uh, it's true to talk less, sell more. Use your tonal patterns, okay? I use technically three. There's 29 different tonal patterns that we use as a, as a human being. I technically use three, absolute certainty, utter sincerity, and a reasonable man tone. Okay, I've used that for years. Okay, that's, that's basic straight line stuff, okay? Um, but again, you, you need to remember the three and four rule, okay? Tonality, and you got four seconds to gain that client to say to themselves, you know what? This is somebody I want to speak to. All right, that's when you get a client that's really rough in the beginning, and they go, all right, I'll listen to you. What do you got? Okay, so it's really, really important to do that. All right, now, when you get on the phone with a client and you're not sharp, okay, if you're not on top of your game, you don't got that mental focus, okay, this, a client paints their picture in their head of you. All right, you don't have the luxury of being in front of them, okay, and sitting them eye to eye, watching, you know, body language. All you have is tonality, and you have certainty in your voice. So when you're not prepared, okay, and you're not sharp, this is the client's picture of you. All right? Someone I want to listen to, sharp, absolute certain on the phone, okay, and somebody, that, um, uh, uh, which one does he want to talk to? Remember, these, all he's doing, the client on the phone, he, he don't have the luxury of seeing you. He's painting a picture of who this person is on the phone. Just like if I was talking to you on the phone, or any of you, you would paint the picture. You don't even know who I look like, but there's a visualization that you're picturing in your head. So again, sharp or not sharp, this is what the client visualizes. If you're not sharp, they'll talk to you for a while, you know? But all it's going to do is suck your time management out, and you're not making any money when you're wasting time. All right. Um, okay, I'm using this as an example. Um, I should have probably updated this. But this is an example of the first few seconds on the phone to gaining somebody's control of the conversation. Once you gain control of the conversation, you gotta stay in control, okay? All right, so, I mean, this, this has three different tonal patterns in it. Number one, when you get on the phone, you have to have bottled enthusiasm, you gotta raise a sharp as far as, as as knowing what you're saying, you can't be um on uncertain of yourself. You gotta portray yourself as the best in the business, period. I'm the best. Come over with your tonality. See how I'm talking right now? I'm certain that I'm the best, because I know it. I programmed myself to be this way. That's the absolute certainty tone that I'm talking to you guys with, okay? That'll help you gain control immediately. The prospect will know you are different, okay? And they think that this is someone I want to speak to. When I, when I get on the phone with somebody, I say, hello, Mr. Jones. Hey, it's Danny Ray from insuranceforburial.com. How are you? Excellent. Excellent. I was just reaching out to you in reference to the, to the inquiry you made online at one of our websites, insuranceforburial.com, and your expressed interest in burial insurance? The guy says, yes. Okay, well, first and foremost, I just got to let you know, I'm the licensed agent in the state of Texas. They make me say that, but I'm also your personal agent. And what I'm going to do for you is I will find you the best price policy in the industry it's just what I do for a living, but it will be with any rated carrier better. So if you have any questions on along the way, feel free to jump in, okay? Okay, done. Full control of the conversation, done. There's three tonal panels there. Now the reason why I say they make me say that is because subconsciously I want them to think that I follow the rules. 
okay? It's a more of a NLP mentality thing. Some people say, why do you say that? Because when you say that in the right way, subconsciously the client knows that you follow the rules. So right off the bat, subconsciously, they're like, oh, this guy follows the rules. I want to do business. You want to do business with people to follow the rules, right? Right? <laughs> That's why that little thing's in there. It's NLP stuff. That's a whole other topic. <laughs> but um, with that said, um, I guess uh, we can open up some questions. That's a great question. Um, it's just something, it's something you gotta feel out along the conversation. But once I get wind of somebody's gonna waste my time, I say, I basically, I call them out. I say, listen, you know, what do you wanna do? I mean, you, you did an inquiry, I'm here to help you. I'll give you the best rate if you really want it. But honestly, tell me, it's okay. You're not gonna hurt my feelings. Do you want this? And if they say, no, okay, here's my phone, and I have a nice day, next lead. I don't sit there and just try to overcome, because again, me, I'm all about energy in, energy out. Okay, so if, if I feel, and it comes with experience, if I feel that they're just leading me down the path of, you know, th this person's not going to buy, then that, we're just not right for each other. And I'll tell them that. You know, listen, I got 37 other people that, that want to speak to me today. I have 800 seniors a month that want to talk to me. I, I want to help you. But you got to meet me half, halfway. I'll tell you what. You know, two or three, I'm going to go ahead and qualify. In two and three minutes from now, you know what the rates are. Then you let me know what you want to do, Okay. Okay, then you got them. It's that reasonable man, okay? Makes it, I can say that to any one of you guys in any conversation, you're gonna say okay to me. Okay, okay? <laughs> yeah, get it. Um, contact rate, I mean, I, that's, that's, a great, that's a great question. I don't really focus too much on metrics like that. I, I'm just a, a dial and get contact. What I do know is probably more than 60% of, if I'm gonna contact a lead, and then again, sometimes you're just not gonna contact them, right? It is what it is. Or I don't put weight into that either. It's just somebody they'll put in a drip and that'll be that. I'll, down the road if they're serious, they'll give me a call back. Very good on automation and I'm very good on emails too, guys. Links, video, and stuff like that, that's a whole nother topic. Come in, talk to me this week and about it too. But, um, it's just one of those things, a numbers game. Um, I, I, what I do know is the sweet spot is 12, two, and three. That's the end of the first day and the second day. Okay, usually after that falls off a cliff. Okay, and again, you don't wanna waste time. Time's important. Time management is very, very important. Time's something you can't get back. You know, so I don't, I, that's what I focus on pretty much, you know. Yeah, uh, my, that's a good question. Um, the way I, I structure my calls is when a new lead comes in, they, order, they get an auto email and text that goes out, okay? And then when, I, then when I call them, if they don't answer, voicemail. When I disposition the call to, they'll get a text message to let them know that I called them, okay? Um, and then call three is the next day. Then after call three, and when I disposition call three, they'll get another email. Then when I disposition the four, they'll give it a text. But I usually call the first call, an hour later I'll call them again, then I won't even call them that day. Unless, of course, I'll dis if it's a West Coast and I want to work late, I'll, di I'll smartly disposition that call later in the day because I'm on the East Coast. Okay, I used to write three, four policies a night after nine o'clock when I used to do that. Um, but yeah, it's it, it then call forward roll around. Okay, that'll be uh, the end of the second day. That's four hours. So let's just say you made a phone call at nine o'clock in the morning, getting in touch with the person. It would show up my dialer at ten o'clock. Then if I didn't get in touch with them, it would show up my dialer the next day at ten o'clock. Then call four would be one o'clock. So I try to branch it over the course of the day, over a period of three or four days, you know. But constantly, always in your face to get a text or email from me every time I, I disposition the call, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, you. Well, as soon as the lead is, as soon as they click submit on the lead, they immediately get a text and an email. Now, I've been, I've been using text messages with a lot of video now. So the text message link, they click on it, they see a video who I am. I, I've, I've been really, we've been testing that recently. It's been, been pretty good. 
Um, but yeah, they'll get a text email. As soon as they get the lead, they get a text email from me. And then when I call them and disposition the call too, they'll get, a, they'll get another text. So right off the bat, you know, within an hour's time, if I'm on top, I'm not bogged down, they'll get two or three different texts, kind of communications plus a voicemail. You know, I'm not big on, you know, let me pound this guy to death. You know, that's just, you know, you, to me, and again, some people disagree. Um, but if you don't have an influx of leads, you got to do what you got to do, you know. That's a great question. Um, when, um, depending on lead theme, if I'm dialing an SEO or a landing page lead, 12 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes, they're closed. What? No, the, uh, I'm at quotes in six minutes. But if the guy's buying, they're sold in between 10 and 15 minutes. Every single call that I make is the same, pro is the same presentation. It's just gotta adapt to the client's questions or lack of. All right, but um, usually if, if I'm selling, it's, it's there's, okay, let's do it within 10 to 15 minutes. Then obviously whatever carrier you're at, the process voice signature is gonna tack another 20 or 30, but the actual sale is done 10, 10 to, between 10 and 15 minutes. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, me, I'm big on themed leads and how to approach a lead. In other words, you got SEO leads. Landing, now, I use the same script for SEO and long form leads so, because it's more of an engaged client. So they, they see a quote, they click submit. Sometimes they, we're big on automation and, and, and hyperlinks and health questionnaires. Well, that's, again, another discussion. But um, if you call on like a, um, like a telemarketing callback lead, a little different, it's a different script. It's a longer script because um, you got to hit their pain points. You got to, you know, you got to take their temperature, so to say. You know, it's not like they're looking for it. They're interested in finding out about it, okay? Whereas an SEO, they consciously thought about it, they got in front of a computer, they started Google search, and they filled out forms. That they're consciously engaged. Um, Facebook long form, which we use a lot of, which takes them off Facebook to a landing page of our website, which is, a, is a, our brand, okay? Again, they see quotes, they, they get, get a quote, they're, they, they're a more engaged client. But like a telemarketing lead or a callback lead, you, it's a little more of an approach where you have to sell them on the purpose why. They, you gotta make them realize that they have a problem, okay, or you know, a solution. You gotta hit their pain points. Who's gonna be hurt when you pass away? You know, some people have a high action threshold as people that don't trust you. Me, I'm like minuscule. I mean, I roll over, I can, you can sell me a pencil. <laughs> I'll buy it, you know, that's just me. But um, some people have a very, very high action threshold. Those are the people that are, don't trust anybody. So you have to increase your pain threshold really in the face. Sometimes I tell clients with that form of a lead, a telemarketing callback or a Facebook short form lead, some part of the script I say, so God forbid if you die tomorrow, who's gonna identify the body? I say that to them. God forbid if you die tomorrow, who's gonna identify the body? Because I know in that split second, they're, they're, in a, they're visualizing themselves on a slab, looking up to the person they love the most. Even if it's for a millisecond, it's an emotion they're feeling. That's the pain point. Some people say, well, I don't feel comfortable doing that. No, it's okay, don't do it. I do it all the time. If you die tomorrow, who's gonna identify the body? Oh, it's gonna be Judy. For that one second, they felt that emotion. So again, it comes down to which theme lead. You know, very different. So you can't go to a telemarketing callback lead with an SEO script because SEO script, you're like, you're in their face, you know what I mean, they're buying. And likewise, if you used a telemarketing callback, or a, a direct transfer script with an SEO lead, you're gonna put them to sleep. So it really comes down to what theme lead you're calling. Good question though. My process is very simple. Uh, basically what I tell a client after I find out what they have, I say, okay, um, all right, Mr. Jones, I'm gonna spade a sales pitch. I'm really a no-nonsense kind of, kind, of, kind of guy, I'll get right to the point. What I'm gonna do for you is I'm gonna ask you a comprehensive series of health and, uh, health and lifestyle questions. What that does for me gives me the abilities to separate the fakers from the makers, really isolate the one carrier that's gonna give you that best rate. Once we determine who that is, most importantly, the lowest rate, the next process is very simple. 
If you want coverage in the next 30 minutes, I'll get it done for you, but you can also pick a due date down the road. In a couple of minutes, you let me know what you want to do, okay? Yeah. That's all, just very, make it very, very simplistic, very easy. It's, it's, it's life insurance, it doesn't have to be complicated. And that's the way, and I tell them that, you know, it's not a complicated thing, you know. So. <laughs> like what do you mean, like anti-gun? <laughs> Oh, they took you off the Pluto or Uranus, as JB would say. <laughs> All right. Um, people, like, it's, again, it comes down to time management. I mean, you can waste, a guy like that or a person like that is probably going to be a chargeback. I, I mean, I look at it that way. If it's that hard and we're going to talk about politics and everything else, whatever, it's, that, that'll suck an hour out of your time. And that, that, that basically you lost three or four sales probably because of that. So... It's hard to because I'm a, listen. I'm, I'm a people person. I like speaking to veterans and people. I, I, I like having conversations. I love to pe speak to people, but you got to have that fine line, you know, where you don't want to be brushed off so far into the forest, you know, where your compass is broken and, you, and it's cloudy out. You can't even follow the sun to know where you're going. You know what I'm saying? So you, it's usually you got to keep them. You got to draw them back into the conversation. And if they don't, then you just gotta, you know, simply part as friends. You know. Oh, yeah, yeah. My, uh, Lisa Marie, my wife, is just phenomenal at this. Um, yeah, it's basically a professional, I fire you. You're fired in a professional way. I'm closing your file, you know. Um, yeah, and, and they, get, uh, they get back. Lisa Marie, my wife, she, she's, she gets <laughs> daily, you know, daily. She'll write one or two deals, and when she's prospecting on the phone and she's in the zone, she writes one or two deals a day just off that. Yeah, it's, it's really important that that last email and um, the text, especially, you know, just want to let you know I'm closing your file. You know, it's a professional way of firing them, you know. In the back. That's a good question. Again, some people enjoy, like doing that, and I think it's more so, uh, um, the, Question is, uh, how do you feel about triple tapping on your first call? Like calling somebody and then calling back and then calling back. I think uh, that's, that's a good question. I think it's more of a thing that, depending on what theme lead you're getting. getting. Okay, again, if it's an SEO or a, a long form lead where people filled out the form, they've seen rates, um, you don't want to go ahead and portray yourself as a salesy person that just wants to make a sale by pounding them. Okay, but also, you know, if it's a telemarketing callback and things of that nature, then, you, I, I don't. I don't disagree with not doing it, without a doubt. I mean, double, th two, double, triple tapping. If it works for you, then do it. Yeah. If, if it, guys, if things work for you, don't change it. Yeah, without a doubt. Yeah. Yeah. You get bogged down. That's a good, that's a good, that's a, actually a really good question. What I like to do, again, when you're bogged down, because you got call three, fours, and fives coming in at all different times, but you, those call twos are important, okay? You don't want them to fizzle out for three days, right? What I do is I would just go to a disposition, okay? Go to leads, disposition, and say call two, so all of them in front of you, you have to manually dial them, dial them though, or right click, open up in a new tab. You know, that's what I, that's what I used to do. I would just blast through the call twos, Okay, if, if I feel like I'm getting behind. Because remember, after you get to call three, it's, it's falling off a cliff now. So you gotta hit the sweet spot. Call twos and threes, that's really the two, three, and four is where the realm is. 10% of the phone call contacts you make is gonna be the first phone call. And under 10% is the fifth phone call. So that sweet spot is the end of day two or the last call of day two and the call uh, on day, I'm sorry, the last call of day one and two calls in, on, on, on the second day. Well, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Well, that's, that's, that's a good question, okay? And me, me as a person, I like to speak to seniors. So sometimes they, I, I just enjoy speaking to them sometimes. But when you're in the zone and you want to sell, um, time is everything, okay? I, I would never say to abruptly be rude and get off the phone with them, sorry, have a nice day. I say, listen, you know what? I got to run into a meeting. Make an excuse. I got to run into a meeting. Here's my phone number. If you ever want to move forward, listen, I'll make sure that you have the very best, okay? Be careful of Colonial Pen, Globe, AARP. Those are gimmicks. Stay away from those. I'd always drop that because it'll stick in their head. Okay, and they go, well, why is that? That's what you want them to say. Well, let me tell you why. And then whatever they're just saying, now they're interested. They're going to tweak their interest. Okay? Because a lot of that's, you got to understand something. They're getting thrown in their face. Colonial pens, 995! <laughs> it's such a gimmick. Okay? It's, and then they got the globe. The, I tell, right off the bat, I tell, I tell uh, anything you see on late night on TV and the index cards you get in the mail, they're gimmicks, they're garbage. It's not worth the ink they're written on. Let me tell you why, and I just go into it. You know. Then you go to the section of the small where you kind of set the foundation of the small and all this, so that you have no trouble with like my area of society or whatever. Yeah, say that one more time. I'm sorry. So you kind of you know the small section of like the small area of the city, you want to get across in a manageable way, and you just kind of give it your best. Oh, okay. Um, you said it earlier. Yeah, yeah. What, what I normally do when, when I get into a script, um, when we're late, um, when I get into a script. Okay, and I go get control of the conversation, go down to what the what the uh, what the uh, the co amount of coverage they have. I always try to treat the devil by saying, you know, if if um, if uh, God, um, God passed away, who's going to get this money? If they say spouse, okay, what I'm going to do for you, they're going to give you a call for her as well. It'll be the best rate in the country. Okay, and and, and you just let me know if you want to do it. I'll put it on the back burner. Okay, okay. Then at that point, moving forward, I just assume the sale is a double, right down to the end. Okay, and um, right after that, I say, okay, all right, so we'll look at a $10,000 policy for you and the wife seems very, very doable. All right, I'm gonna spade a sales pitch. What I'm gonna do for you is I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and ask you a comprehensive series of health and lifestyle questions. What that does for me gives me the ability to separate the fakers from the makers, isolate that one carrier that's gonna give you that best rate. Once we determine who that is, most importantly, the lowest rate, the next, uh, the next process is very simple. I can get you coverage in 30 minutes if you want it, or you can pick a due date down the road. You, in the next two minutes, you let me know what you wanna do, okay? Good? Yeah, well, sorry guys, I'm running a little late. Yeah, sorry, come talk to me guys, you know? Sorry.